ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय Shrimad Bhagavatam Canto 7 Chapter 9 The Lord pacifies the Lord with prayers text 16 Tra hmm chinta trastos miya ham kripa patsala du saho gra Samsara chakra kharanad Krasatam pranitaha Padaksva karma bhira Utsattama tengri mulam Prito pavarga sharnam Vasyase kadanu Trashtos miya trashtos miya ham kripa vatsala du sahogra samsara vaktra kanada kadanad krasatam pranitaha Parasu karma bir utsattama tengre mulam Prito pravarga sharnam avaste kadanu No. Trashtos miyaham kripa vatsala du sahogra. Samsara chakra kanada grasatam pranita. Pada sva karma bir usatama tengri mulam. Prito pravarga sharnam havase kadanu. Trashtaha. Frightened. Asmi am. Aham I. Kripana Vatsala, O oh my Lord, who are so kind to the fallen souls, who have no spiritual knowledge, do saha, intolerable, ugra, ferocious. It's, it's also a French word, ugra. Ugra means a demon, a ferocious demon. But spelled with an E. Ugra, Ugra. Fero uh, samsara chakra of the cycle of birth and death. Kadanat, from which, from such a miserable condition. Krasatam, among other conditioned souls who devour one another. Pranitaha, being thrown. Pa bada, bound. So karma be the cause by the reactions of my own activities. Usatama, 
O great insurmountable, te your angri mulam to the soles of the lotus feet. Pritaha, being pleased with me. Pavarga sharanam, which are the shelter meant for liberation from this horrible condition of material existence. Vyasa, you will call me Kada when Nu indeed. Translation purported by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami to the Prabhupada. O most powerful, insurmountable Lord, who are kind to the fallen souls, I have been put into the association of demons as a result of my activities, and therefore I am very much afraid of my condition of life within this mature world. When will that moment come when you will call me to the shelter of your lotus feet, which is the ultimate goal for liberation from conditioned life, conditional life? Purport, being in the material world is extremely miserable, but certainly when one is put into the association of asuras or atheistic men, it is intol- intolerably so. One may ask why the living entity is put into the material world. Indeed, sometimes foolish people deride the Lord for having put them in here. Actually, everyone is put into conditional life according to karma. Therefore, Prahlad Maharaj, representing all the other conditioned souls, admits that he was put into life amongst the Asuras because of the results of his karma. The Lord is known as Kripan, Kripana Vatsala because he is extremely kind to the conditioned souls. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita, therefore, the Lord appears whenever there are discrepancies in the execution of religious principles, yada, yada, hi dharma, sya, glanir, bhavati, bharata, tadatmanam, shrijam, yaham. The Lord is extremely anxious to deliver the conditioned souls, and therefore he instructs all of us to return home back to Godhead. Sarva Dharma Prajaja Mam Ekam Sharnam Vraja. Thus, Prahlad Maharaj expected that the Lord, by his kindness, would call him again to the shelter of his lotus feet. In other words, everyone should be eager to return home back to Godhead, taking shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord, thus being fully trained in Krishna consciousness. O most powerful and surmountable Lord, who are kind to the fallen souls, I have been put into the association of demons as a result of my activities. And therefore, I am very much afraid of my condition of life within this mature world. When will that moment come when you will call me to the shelter of your lotus feet, which is the ultimate goal for liberation from conditional life? Nirvi Shesha Shunivadi Paskya Dhyade Siddharna. Purusha Prakriti Sohi, Bhunkte Prakriti Jangunan, Karna Guna Sangosya, Sad Asad Yoni Janmasu. The living entities in this material world follow the ways of life, enjoying the three modes of material nature. This is due to their association with those modes and thus they meet with both good and with evil amongst the various species. In other words, due to our association, we become encouraged to engage in some particular mode of material nature. And we develop a taste for it. Material taste. Material taste means when our anxiety to enjoy is dissipated, we call that happiness. And when we're anxiety, and anxiety to enjoy, we call that, or when we're lamenting the fact fact that we can enjoy, we call that misery. And the moment we're not hankering and lamenting, we call that happiness. Generally, we identify that when the senses contact their objects, and then there's dissipation of this hankering and lamentation for a moment, that's our happiness. And then, 
the senses are just like, when you take fi- ghee, you throw it in the fire, the fire blazes more. But if you f- throw enough ghee onto the fire, it appears to go out for some time. And then it blazes even greater than it was before. So material existence means hankering for gr- sense gratification. And when our senses are gratified, we appear to be happy, to satisfied, but then the senses become even more agitated and blaze even hi- higher, stronger. Therefore, one should get have good association. And the best association are those Naishamatis Tavar Urukraman Grim. Naishamatis Tavat Arukram Sprishat Inarto Bhagavad Inarto. Those who don't have these unwanted habits of hankering and lamentation. Who have taken shelter of Arukramangrim, who have taken shelter of the lotus feet of Krishna. And therefore they have a different happiness, a different taste, a different experience. Unless get, one gets the taste of Krishna consciousness then one cannot stay neutral for very long. Of course, by practice over many lifetimes, Bonam Jamanamante, Gyanamam Prabhadite, Vasudeva Saravamiti, Saramahatma Sudurlabha. If one practices for life after life, one may come to the neutral state of material existence and become eligible to be, remain in Brahman. But it's very difficult to stay there because although Brahman is certainly superior to any material experience, it's not very exciting. It's not, there's no variety. And therefore one will become bored after some time and look for variety. Just like if every day all you had was sweet rice. After a year or so, you probably wonder, is there anything else to eat? I like sweet rice, but not that much. Maybe you can put a strawberry in it or something, some variety. Just like our Vaishnava holidays is variety. If every day was the same day, same thing, there was no holiday, there was no variety, no special days, then we get bored after some time. So even in the spiritual world, the pastimes are going on, there's variety. Every demon doesn't look the same that Krishna kills. It's not that every day Agasura comes and he kills him. And the next day, oh, there's Agasura again. (laughs) I thought I took care of him yesterday. I wonder what he did. Oh, he swallowed all the coward boys, like always. He's been doing that since time immemorial. I guess I'm supposed to kill him today, too. (laughs) It'd be pretty boring. So, although... Nitya, Nitya, Nava, Nava, Yovana. Although Krishna's pastimes are going on again and again and again, but they're always fresh. While the material world is punak punas charvita charvananam, everyone is always chewing the chewed, and it's never fresh. It's always the same. As a matter of fact, we know when there's a fast day, then when we finally get a chance to eat, the prashadam even tastes better. When every day you have the same prash- eat prashadam at the same time, it tastes good, but it tastes be- even better when you're separated from it for a brief period of time. Luckily, today is Govardhan Puj, so we won't be separated. But don't worry, fast days will come up and we'll be able to appreciate fasting. But here, Prahlad Maharaj said, when you're in the association of, de- of demons, uh, demons are always trying to do exactly the opposite of what Krishna wants them to do. Therefore, they're always putting themselves in difficulty because Krishna knows what to be done. And when you're in association with demons, you have no idea what's to be done. Pravitim ja, navritim ja, jana navido asura, nisocham napichachara, nisatyam teshavitite. The demons don't know what's to be done and what's not to be done Neither cleanliness nor truthfulness or proper behavior is, is found in them. Like when the demons 
when the Asuras and the, the Devas were turning the ocean to milk. Lord Korma, the tortoise incarnation, became the pivot for Mount Mandara. Vasuki was the churning rod, was the rope to churn. And Vasuki is a serpent and he breathes out fire. That's, I guess, where the dragons come from. He's the big dragon in the, in the universe. And so Krishna, he told the demigods, take the mouth of the serpent. Come to the front and take the mouth. And the demons are in the back of the tail. They started to complain. Why the demigods always get the good part and we got the tail? <laughs> so the Krishna said, all right. The demigods said, all right. You know, we surrender to you. You're more important. Than, you're greater than we are. You take the head. We'll take the tail. So they were churning, churning. Vasuki's breathing out fire. And the demons are being scorched by the fire and burned, being burned to ashes. So Krishna says black, they say white. So in order to trick them, he did exactly the opposite. If he would have taken the tail, they would have demanded the tail. <laughs> And if he would have taken the head, then they would have demanded the head. So he took the head, so they demanded the head and got burnt. Because they do the exact opposite of what Krishna wants. Therefore, they're always getting themselves into difficulty. They see the whole world is full of problems, and they think they're going to solve the problems. They don't realize that the problems are due to their karma of their past attempts to solve problems. So the very problems they're being faced with are results of what they've tried to do in, the, do in the past to solve problems. And now they think that now we're going to solve the problems and we're going to get rid of the problems, but actually there's going to create more problems. But Vishnu, they don't see how things are actually going on. They're blind. They're blind, and their leaders are also blind. And therefore, they're going to put themselves into simply more and more difficulty. Svavidra hostra karar, samstuta purusha pashu, nayat karnapatiyo peta jatinamagada gaja. That those who are like dogs, cat, camels, hogs, and asses. They glorify the bigger hogs, dogs, camels, and asses. So one may be very exalted in the material world in terms of being able to eat more, sleep more, have more sex, or defend themselves better than others. But after all, this is the business of the animals. So those who are less experienced, less capable, less powerful, less animalistic, who cannot gratify the senses in the same way as their leaders, they glorify them. Oh, this is a big animal. And all the other little animals, animals pay respects to the big animal, and they write about the animal, they glorify him, they write poetry, they offer respects to him. But after all, what is their accomplishments? They're just expert at eating, sleeping, mating, defending. They're expert at getting the resources so they can supposedly eat better than everyone else. Because how much can they eat? Even if you have $100 billion, how many chapatis can you eat? It's not for every billion dollars you get an extra chapati. <laughs> how much can you sleep? Even you have a hundred trillion dollars, you can only see 24 hours a day. And mating, defending is also limited. If you become a pigeon or a monkey, your ability to mate will be greater, not by simply increasing your amount of money. And defending, of course, defending, it says that I think King Ugrasena had four trillion personal bodyguards or something like that. Obviously, a lot of people are out to get him. 
But even then, he couldn't live forever. And if you have no nothing, then you have no enemies either. There's no one who's going to come and try and take anything away from you. Because they have nothing to give you. Unless they're going to cut off your hair and then at night sell it somewhere. <laughs> So those who are powerful in material existence due to the fact that they have better abilities or a, a facility for eating, sleeping, mating, defending, there's no real advantage for self-realization. Uh, will not solve the real problems of life, namely birth, death, old age, and disease. But they don't know that. And therefore they take shelter of less, uh, of greater animals in order to satisfy their animal propensities. But at the end, they're simply creating problems for themselves and others. And they don't realize Tanaham Dvishita Kuran Samstareshu Naradamam Shi Pramyajas from Ashubam Asvi Shveva Yoni Shu Asram Yoni Apanam Mura Janmani Janmani Mama Prapyaiva Kuntia Tato Yadamang Yadamang Gatim. Those are envious and mischievous, who are the lowest among mankind, I perpetually cast down into the lower species of life. Taining such lower species of life, they gradually sink down to the most abominable type of existence. Trividam narakasyedam, dwaram nashitam atmanaha, kama kroda tatalovas, tasmat etam triyam chajat. There are three gates leading to this hell, lust, anger, and greed, Every sane man should become free himself from these gates because they lead to the degradation of the self. What's being glorified by these asuras satisfying ultimately lust and greed and anger. This is their power. They can gratify their lusts more than others and therefore they have, they're more greedy and they can take care of their enemies better than others, and therefore their anger is satisfied. Uh, but these are the problems. These are the things that create problems. And they're all due to the fact that people don't want to listen to Krishna. And therefore, yakshasra vidim utsrija vartate kamakarata isasadim avapnoti nasukam naparam gatim. That those who are asuras, they don't know they don't follow Shastra, they don't follow Krishna, and therefore they can obtain neither peace nor happiness nor the supreme destination. But they don't believe in these things. They don't believe that there's a supreme destination. They don't know what peace is. They don't know what happiness is. And therefore that's called ignorance. They think that what's to be done is actually not to be done, and what's not to be done, that's what they take as their goal of life. And therefore, they always strive in the wrong direction. Or as Prabhupada was saying, that to live very simply, one can simply grow a little food and live off the land and spend the rest of the time in Krishna consciousness. But no, they create these huge cities, and in order to maintain the city, they slaughter animals in a huge slaughterhouses. And they think that's advancement. But actually it's advancement towards hell. People work in the, fa- in the slaughterhouses, they're already in hell. And the people who are eating the food, which is all sinful, they're also going to hell. People are cooking it and serving it and transporting it. It's the one-way path to the, the Tiyamar Loka. That's why Yama, that's why Vidura, Yamaraj got cursed. He came as Vidura. Because it was the beginning of Kali Yuga and he knew he needed a vacation. Because it was Kali Yuga is a very busy time for Yamaraj. His calendar is backed up till the end of Kali Yuga. Because he has to judge. He's working day and he's working overtime in Kali Yuga. So many people are coming to be judged, be sent into the lower speeches of life. He needed a vacation before Kali Yuga started. 
So we should not be so foolish as to join the parade to Yamaloka. Where's everyone going? Oh, they're going to Yamaloka. Well, maybe I should go and see what's going on there. I'll join the parade. <laughs> see what's happening. Who's Yamaraj? He's a Mahajan. Oh, that should be interesting. <laughs> no one should try to avoid these three gates to hell. By following the instructions of Krishna, as given in Bhagavad Gita and other literature, and therefore avoid trying to solve problems which can never be solved. Instead, solve the real problems of old age, disease, and death, which the suras are simply trying to deny. Or they say, yes, in a million years, in 10 million years, we'll have the solution. They themselves will only live for another 50 years. The people that are claiming they're going to find the solution in a million years they're only going to live for 50 years. So who's going to verify if anyone's ever going to find the solution? They're going to be in the, in the lower species of life by that time. So what good will the solution do to them? Do you think if they found a solution, they'd, they'd give it to the ants? Oh, my dear ant, but you can be, live as an ant forever. <laughs> they're going to be an ant. They're talking about a solution to live forever. But they're all going to live for 50 years, and there'll be an ant, and maybe someone will find a solution, so there'll be an ant forever. <laughs> that would not be very auspicious. So one should not take these things very seriously, as it says in Bengal, just like a goat can eat anything, so a madman can say anything. So the whole civilization is being led by blind people, and therefore, they're simply causing themselves problems, and they're causing everyone else problems too. And the only solution is to take shelter of a Mahajan like Prahlad Maharaj and see things properly. So I'll stop there. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, Hare Krishna. Um, I'm wondering... Probably this question was asked a few times, but... Yeah, uh, right, since time more, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's been asked more than a few times. Yeah. Um, isn't this this time, compared to the time in Kurukshetra, also um, the time uh, for for Krishna or some avatar to come to... to to save the devotees or... Uh, he is. He's maybe. coming in the form of the holy name. Yeah. The holy name is our salvation. Mm. But I see time in Kurukshetra was more bl blissful or pious than this period. Well, don't worry. We'll get our reactions. Huh? We haven't seen every, anything yet. Okay. There's always a war going on. There's, and there's always... Disaster. But, yeah, Krishna came and he, Paritranaya, and he's also coming. But here he's coming to kill the demonic mentality. So we're supposed to be the instrument for Krishna to help Krishna kill the demonic mentality. He's not interested in killing people's bodies because they don't last for very long anyhow. So it's a sense of killing them. We're, they're practically, everyone's practically dead already. So therefore, he comes and tries to wake them up. Anything else? Thank you very much. Grandaraj Shamad Bhagavatam Kijai. Chila Prabhupada Kijai. Gaur Pramana.